Animal welfare science is a data-driven approach to asking animals how they're feeling. It's a complex and relatively new science that asks how animals are experiencing the world. Here at Lincoln Park Zoo, we're interested in animal welfare because it helps us provide the best care to each animal at the zoo. There are many tools we use to answer questions about animal welfare. We try to be creative and think of tools that are non-invasive and don't bother the animals, and are voluntary, so the animal can choose to participate. For example, a non-invasive approach may be gathering fecal samples while cleaning habitats, so zoo staff can monitor stress hormones. A voluntary approach may be a polar bear walking onto a scale so that we can monitor his weight and learn how he might be feeling. Or a snow monkey using a touchscreen computer to tell us about her favorite foods. One of the tools we rely on is Zoo Monitor, an app created at Lincoln Park Zoo that lets us collect information on how animals behave and use their habitats. Understanding animal behavior is one of the best ways to figure out how animals feel. Using all these different tools, we're able to evaluate how an individual animal is feeling and enhance their welfare by making adjustments to their care. This cycle is never ending as care continues and preferences change throughout an animal's life. For example, zoo scientists monitored the Takins to determine how they felt in their habitat. Zoo monitor data showed us that the Takins were spending most of their time in a few shady areas. New shade structures were installed in their habitat and after a round of monitoring, data showed us that the Takins were using much more of their space. Measuring welfare allowed us to give the Takins more ways to feel comfortable in their home. Here at the zoo, we've also found that animals experience better welfare when they have more choices and control over their day. Just like you may choose to visit the zoo, we give our animals choices for where to spend their time too. Most of the time, when you can't see an animal at the zoo, it's because that animal is choosing to be behind the scenes for a bit or in a more private part of their habitat. Regenstein macaque forest is a great example of how choice and control can be offered in a habitat. The Japanese macaques can choose between hot rocks, cooling elements, caves, or a running stream and pool. There are also lots of trees and boulders, so the monkeys can spend time on the ground or high up in the habitat. Plus, there's enough space that the monkeys can be huddled up all together or spread out and exploring on their own, depending on what feels good to them. Studying animal welfare also helps us understand how animals feel before, during, and after programs with visitors. We learned that animals such as African penguins experienced good welfare when they had the choice to participate in programs, like our Malat family penguin encounter. With this in mind, the zoo's animal encounters now always ensure that individual animals can stay in their habitat and have the choice to interact with guests during programs. Here at the zoo, we care for more than 700 individual animals, and each year every animal is personally evaluated. The goal is to check on how the animals are doing and think of changes that could be made to improve their daily life. With all this information, we can continuously evaluate animal welfare and enhance the care we provide to all the animals that call the zoo home.